Hello, this is Annie from Polar Explorers, and I'm going to tell you about our North Pole flight. We have been organizing North Pole flights since 1993, and that's us on our very first North Pole expedition, back when going to the North Pole was a lot more like going to the moon than it is now. We absolutely love this expedition, and we've been running it almost every year since 1993. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that we have loads of information about this expedition, not only on our website, but also in additional documents that we can send you, including references and tips from previous participants. And if you're the kind of person who would enjoy speaking with our references before you register, we're happy to arrange that, so just let us know. I'll get back to what resources there are in a couple of minutes, but for now, let's jump into the expedition itself. This expedition meets and begins in Svalbard, which is a group of islands way above Norway in the Arctic. Here's a close-up of that map. And the largest island here, this is all Svalbard, the largest island here is called Spitsbergen. And this red circle right here is the town of Longyearbyen, and that's where we'll meet. Longyearbyen is a beautiful and bustling Arctic community with around 3,000 residents it boasts the northernmost university in the world. It has an award-winning museum. It's got first-class hotels and restaurants and a celebrated history. It lies well above the Arctic Circle at 78 degrees north, and it's accessible by commercial air from Oslo. Here's a shot at the famous signpost that sits outside the Long Urban Airport. We'll meet you at the airport and introduce you to the town before dropping you off at your hotel. Long Urban is an adventurer's paradise with gorgeous mountains, fjords, glaciers flanking it on all sides. Guided tours by snowmobile and dog sled are very popular and they depart from the hotels for various locations on the island every day. And we can help you arrange that. Most of our participants who join us on the North Pole flight plan to spend an extra day or two to experience some of the adventures that make this Arctic town so unique. We like to call it the Chamonix of the Arctic. In addition to its world-class activities, it also has top-notch hospitality, both with a surprising choice of excellent restaurants and a range of accommodations that vary from guest houses to Airbnbs to first-class hotels. A casual welcome reception kicks off the expedition. It's a great way to meet the other participants and learn more about the coming days. And those of you who are wine enthusiasts, might be surprised to know that this little Arctic town is home to one of Northern Europe's largest wine cellars at the Husset restaurant. They offer wine tastings that are a really enjoyable way to spend an evening. Long Yearbin also happens to have the northernmost brewery in the world, so those of you who prefer beer to wine won't be left out in the cold. Prior to departing, we'll check all of your clothing and equipment to ensure that you have everything that you need. And for those of you who have rented clothing or boots from us, we'll give you these items so that you're fully ready when the time comes to board the plane for the flight to the Barneo Ice Camp. Here we are boarding the plane at the Long Urban Airport. The plane is an Antonov 74, and the flight is typically around two and a half hours in duration. And here's a, glam a glimpse of the Barneo Ice Camp from the air. You can see it's not much more than a handful of tents and a runway, but the fact that it is on drifting ice makes it a really unique base camp. It's an interesting and an unusual place, and you never know exactly what types of activities or projects will be going on during any given visit. When we disembark from the plane and take our first steps across the frozen Arctic Ocean, it can be really exciting. Of course, the base camp is on drifting ice and its precise location changes on a daily basis. Now you won't feel it moving, but sometimes the camp can move several miles or more in just one day. We'll get an orientation to the camp, we'll meet some of the hosts, and maybe have a meal in the dining tent prior to the flight to the North Pole. But of course, everyone's eager to get to the North Pole as it is the highlight of this experience. And that's the helicopter that we take, an MI-8 helicopter. And here's what the inside of the helicopter looks like. Now this is a video from our YouTube channel and I'll jump ahead to the takeoff, turn that down a little, 
to the takeoff um, and skip ahead here. And you can see that this is what the Barneo Ice Camp looks like from the air. Just a few tents. You can really see that it's a small speck, a little oasis on this vast Arctic Ocean. And as we move away from the camp, you can see that we are surrounded by this beautiful pack ice that stretches as far as the eye can see in any direction. Here we have some really nice pans of ice and here we have some areas of compression, some pressure ridges. And you can watch that video and several other videos on our YouTube channel. The helicopter is a great platform to experience the bird's eye view of the polar sea. The windows open up, which allows for great photos like this one that really captures the essence of the pack ice at the top of the world. Reaching the North Pole is really exciting. In this case, you can see that the helicopter landed a short distance from the pole, which is where the crowd has gathered right over there. And here's a GPS, uh, what a GPS looks like at the North Pole where all the lines of latitude converge and you can literally walk around the world in a few few short steps um, and you can transit all the time zones in just a matter of seconds. So what do people do at the North Pole? Basically everything. We have seen people walk around the world doing handstands or laying in all the time zones. We have performed marriages and renewals of vows most people bring signs and banners or something special to commemorate the moment. Many of our participants join us as solo, tra solo travelers and others uh, join with family members or friends. And frequently we get groups of friends or family that make the journey all together. But regardless of whether you are traveling solo or with others, we know that standing at the North Pole is most likely a once in a lifetime experience for most people. And we're honored to share this time with you, celebrating and taking pictures of you and helping you make the most of your time at the pole. We'll stay at the North Pole anywhere from 45 minutes to over two hours, depending upon some variables, including the weather. That's more than enough time to do everything you wanna do at the pole, get those pictures that you wanna make sure you get and then it's hot time to head back to the base camp. And here's a shot of the inside of the cockpit of the helicopter, which is pretty cool. Back at the base camp, there's always something going on and you never know what to expect. This is something that we've come to understand over our more than 25 years of organizing and guiding this expedition. Often there's scientific experiments or data collection taking place. And there may be a lecture given in the dining tent or even a chance to take a dip in the Arctic Ocean for people who are truly intrepid. Or a chance to spend time with the other inhabitants of the camp, both the two-legged and also the four-legged types. Or a time to go for a hike on the sea ice with a guide to uh, get a close-up view of a pressure ridge or a lead. Meals are served in the dining tent, which is also where all the social gatherings take place. Um, and cookies and hot drinks and snacks are typically available throughout the day and night. Restroom facilities are quite basic. In general, it's really not a fancy place, but it's exclusive simply because of where it is and how few people get a chance to experience it. And here's the dining tent after a meal. You don't need a passport to pass through the Barneo Ice Camp, but you might wanna bring it along for a chance to stamp it with a super cool stamp. You can also stamp postcards and post them back when you're in Longyearbyen. After a night at Barneo, the Antonov will return to take us back to Longyearbyen. It's common for people to photograph the takeoffs and landings on what is surely one of the most interesting runways on the planet. We'll board the plane bound for Longyearbyen and then head back to the rel relative comforts of civilization. And that's the official end of the expedition. But since you're already in the Arctic, it makes sense to plan an extra day or two 
either before the North Pole flight or after the North Pole flight to experience Svalbard, which is a world-class destination in its own right. This website here is the Visit Svalbard website. It lists all of the guided tours and accommodations. Um, it also provides helpful information about the islands and it's a really great resource. Among our recommendations is to spend a day dog sledding and we're happy to connect you with the best mushers in town and help you set up a full or a half day dog sled adventure. We also recommend snowmobile trips to a variety of locations such as the East Coast or Temple Fjord, both great spots to look for polar bears. And if you have a couple of days, we recommend an overnight snowmobile trip. Among the various destinations that you can visit is this remote radio station that has been really beautifully refurbished to accommodate guests. Just give us a shout and we'll share our favorite trips with you and point you in the right direction for making a booking. This expedition has been featured in many publications. It's a new experience every year. It's never the same. Um, and that makes each expedition completely unique. Weather or logistical delays can sometimes occur. So the best way to embark on this journey is with an adventurous spirit and a flexible itinerary that allows you to stay on a day or two extra if necessary. We're happy to share our expedition itinerary, which is also available on our website. It outlines what to expect. It gives a daily schedule and answers some of the most common questions. We also recommend visiting our YouTube channel for a look at our North Pole playlist for uh, some helpful resources. But the best way to learn more about this expedition, and there's our North Pole playlist, the best way to learn more about this expedition is just to speak in person by video conference or by phone. And that's us. And we are really excited to meet you and share more about this expedition, answer your questions, and hopefully share this incredible journey together. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us, www.polarexplorers.com. Thank you so much.